Hi everyone, I'm Oliver from Dentus.com and in this video I'm going to try to answer some questions that I used to receive uh, about the camera tracking stuff because since I published that tutorial, the camera tracking in Blender, um, I received a lot of questions over and over again about if some things can be done or how can they be done so I thought it would be interesting to just answer them all in a single video. So here we go. So this is the probably the most the, the the question that I received the most and is that do I need the camera specifications and how to find them all right um, no you don't need them all right for simple uh, tracking scenes uh, you can do it by hand or you can just uh, find or let Blender uh, guess the the specifications of the camera and probably you will get it right all right no problem at all thing is that when you are trying to track something a little more complex, uh, having that specifications right will help Blender a lot to get a good solution. So uh, if you are handling some pretty complex uh, tracking, it's very recommended to know that specifications of the camera, like the lens and the sensor and all that. All right. And now how can you get that information? Because uh, with some uh, very used cameras like the Canons or something like that, uh, you even have the presets in Blender. But if you have a, a low cost camera or something like that, it's a little more difficult. So um, what I recommend you is to look in the internet because uh, there are a lot of uh, websites that analyze these kind of products and provide some specifications for them. Also, you can try to find them in the manufacturer's website or in the instruction manual from the product you bought from the camera, right? So uh, I hope it helps. So this is the next uh, question. Uh, does the tracking work with camera move me moving forward? Yes, uh, it works and uh, forward and backward and uh, how you want, all right? As long as you can track specific points in the footage, it doesn't matter. And this comes with a second question. Um, in this case, how do you handle the track markers when the marked landmarks are changing size or even shape? This doesn't matter at all to Blender. Blender is only taking into account the exact point that you are tracking, not the surroundings or not the shape of the feature you are tracking. If it changes the perspective, it doesn't matter. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that you need to select uh, markers or features that you track that you Mm, uh, you know, you need to make sure that you will be able to track specific parts of that feature, like, for example, the center or the corner, the corner of a window. It doesn't matter if it's, uh, uh, you know, mm, 50 meters away than if it is right in front of your face. It's just the corner of the window. So you need to select uh, markers that you know that you will be able to track over time, even if they get closer or farther from the camera. So that is the only important thing. Blender will take in account the exact point that you are tracking. It doesn't matter if it changes the perspective or the shape or anything. All right, so that's it. Can you track a video that has a combination of forward, lateral, and pivoting motion? What are the things to consider and how to better handle it? Um, well, this is kind of tricky. This would be a complex uh, tracking exercise, all right? Usually it's better if you don't know how to track or if you don't have a lot of experience by tracking, uh, you should go for more simple uh, you know, tracking scenes. But of course, if someone uh, records it and you need to track it anyway, um, there is, uh, you know, each shot is a different world. It can have a combination of different kind of movements that can make it a mess or can make it very simple. So if you have only uh, movement uh, you need perspective, right? Blender needs uh, perspective information about the, the footage so it can track it and uh, analyze it greatly and create uh, the movement of the camera basing itself on the perspective information. Of course, it at some point of the video, you stop and start rotating uh, like if you were in a tripod. Uh, this can make everything uh, very tricky. Also, uh, it's, uh, you know, if you give a, 360 degree rotation it can also get it a lot complex uh, a lot more complex so what you can do in these situations and what i did a long time ago even before blender has a tracker with other softwares uh, was that i mm, separated the parts of the sorry uh, i separated the parts of the shot that are 
recording in a different uh, movement situation. For example, you take the part where you were moving laterally and uh, then you take the part where you were um, rotating like in a tripod. And what I do is to track these uh, parts of the shot separately. And what I do later is to add a third camera and uh, attach it to the first camera and then switch it with uh, using constraints in Blender or in whatever software to uh, switch it to the second part of the, you know, the other camera that you just tracked with a different method. All right. And uh, this can help to get uh, to get it working. Also, in this kind of uh, shots is what I mentioned before is where uh, having the specifications of the camera right and uh, having, you know, good measures in the in, in the recording uh, area will help you a lot to to get the right uh, solution. Right. So it's very important in this uh, complex uh, kind of shots It's very important to have all the information you can about the camera and uh, the situation in the, which it was uh, recorded because it will help a lot to to find out how to track this uh, these uh, settings even uh, at some points maybe it's uh, too difficult and maybe you need to move the camera manually and having correct measurements about uh, how the person was moving with the camera or something like that will help you to get that right to help with tracking, should a marker planning be made, like placing artificial markers in the scene? Yes, of course, it can help a lot. Um, <clears throat> usually, uh, a technique very used overall when you are recording over a green screen that you will remove later is to place some images even. Images like it's a, like a circle with a cross inside. There are a lot of uh, markers styles in the internet that are very easy to track because they provide a lot of corners and contrast areas. Um, you can use some of that and also you can, if you are recording, let's say a floor in the in the forest, you can place some stones or some little uh, dirt stuff, you know, and place it um, strategically so they will provide you information about the depth of the scene, all right? Um, like there is, for example, uh, another questions about how to place markers. What do I need to have in account uh, when I place the markers in the scene? Well, the main thing that you need to keep in mind is that if you have a tripod like motion only rotating, it doesn't really matter. All right. You can take any kind of markers and it will do it fine because it's only a rotation. But if you have, have only a, a shot where you are moving the camera, it's kind of more tricky. So. Uh, you will need information uh, overall about the depth. So you need uh, information about things that are closer to the camera and things that are farther from the camera because that uh, that is what will give Blender information about the perspective. And if you are moving laterally, for example, things that are closer will move faster than things that are farther away. And that perspective shift, shift uh, is what uh, will help Blender a lot to get the scene right. So if you are tracking, if you are recording a scene that you know that uh, you have a floor or you have, for example, uh, walls and you have things closer to the camera, you can uh, plan the scene in uh, order to have some things that are closer, you know, to have different planes of depth in the, in the scene. Because if you only have a plane like a wall and you are moving the camera, it will be a mess, uh, okay, a uh, really mess. So um, you will maybe even have to move the camera manually, right? Because, uh, you know, it doesn't provide Blender enough information about the tracking. When I say Blender, I say any camera tracking uh, software, right? If you don't have enough information about the perspective, it's very difficult to provide good uh, movement information uh, for the camera. Uh, when when you track so yes it's uh, it helps a lot to um, when you are recording put some uh, stuff like uh, or, I don't know even in the wall like put a poster or something an image uh, that uh, doesn't that fits in the scene you know not not something that it's only meant to be tracked but only uh, to add some detail to the scene that you are recording and also that will provide you some good reference to track later right so it's uh, it's good to do that what happens if i don't have a floor is the floor necessary no it's not necessary as long if you are moving the camera as i said as long as you have information 
of things that are closer to the camera and farther from the camera, you don't need actually a floor, right? Let's say you are making a traveling and you have like uh, some kind of wall or some, you know, stuff going on in front of the camera and other stuff going uh, farther away. So you only need perspective uh, and depth uh, information. It doesn't matter if you don't have a floor. Also, what happens if the floor is not a plane? Like if we are in the forest and it has some, you know, randomness in the surface. Uh, it doesn't matter, actually. What you only need to have in account is that uh, the surface is a static, all right? If you are trying to track an ocean, for example, with waves and everything, they are moving, so it will be uh, completely unuseful. But if you are tracking a, a forest or uh, any kind of uh, road that is uh, has bumps or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You only need to keep in, 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 in mind that the points that you are tracking in the floor are static. They also later, once you have them tracked and uh, already situated in the in the 3D scene, you can just rebuild uh, a mesh based on that markers. So it will provide the shape of the floor you had, which will help a lot if you need to, um, you know, insert 3D objects on it. What do I need to think about when placing markers in the scene? Well, there are a lot of things that you need to keep in mind, but well, actually not, it's quite simple. You need to keep in mind that the things that you are tracking are static in the real world. For example, if you are moving the camera and you have some trees or you have some grass or stuff like this, it's probably that there is some wine that is moving the foliage or the grass and all that. That is uh, not a good idea to track, right? You need to track things that are static, like stones, walls, floors, uh, uh, pieces of dirt in the floor or uh, I don't know anything that is static right don't for example try to track a cloud well you can track clouds in some situations if you are only tracking uh, the sky uh, or things like this but um, for example is if there is a person moving uh, in your shot you should not never uh, track points in the person because uh, you know maybe the person has a very a point really easy to track in the in the shoulder, but it will absolutely full blend when trying to uh, to compute the solution because there is a moving uh, point that is uh, you know if you have a scene uh, you have a perspective and this uh, point is like uh, very far away or is very close very close to the camera so it's moving faster it will full blender and it will make everything complex. Uh, just uh, track markers that are static in the real world. Like, as I said, stones, uh, stuff in the floor, markers that you put specifically in the scene, and everything that is moving, uh, just try to avoid it as much as you can. Okay, this is one that I received a few times because in the tutorial I used uh, image sequences instead of a video file. So why it is better, it is recommended to use uh, an image sequence instead of a video file, uh, pros and cons. Okay, in the previous video I published before the camera tracking tutorial, uh, I explained this and I, I explained how to convert a video into an image file using Blender and also I explained the pros and cons. So uh, I recommend you that if you want to, to know this, uh, you will find a good explanation in that video. You can click right here. Um, yeah, right here I will put an annotation in YouTube. So you can just go to that video and uh, uh, I explain it into that video. What about object tracking? How do you combine object tracking with camera tracking? You like really to make uh, complex questions. Um, I didn't actually try yet the object tracking in Blender, just I made only ba very basic tests, but I never combined it with uh, camera motion tracking. But what I can tell you for other softwares uh, I used before is that usually you track first the camera and then you track the object. So then, uh, Blender, uh, I don't know if Blender does it does this way, I may uh, work in a tutorial for that, but uh, once you have the camera solution, mm, Blender will have in account the, the camera movement for tracking the object, I mean for uh, making the object solution, all right, because if the camera is closed, uh, the object needs to be in the same uh, static position, uh, for example. So. Uh, yeah, it's usually the process to solve first the camera because it's the 
most important thing for Blender to get the perspective and the movement of the camera. And then after that, you track the object motion. Hey, but don't trust me. As I said, I didn't try it yet. Now, this is not actually a question, but uh, some people that contacted me uh, looks like they didn't really understand this and is the keyframes. The keyframes is something that Blender uses to um, analyze the scene and analyze its perspective. So what we need to do with the keyframes is to pick two different frames where we have the same uh, markers in different perspectives, right? So we need to pick them depending on the shot, they could be anything, all right? Any, any frame that uh, you have the same amount and the same exact uh, features tracked, but in different perspectives. So this will uh, get Blender and a starting point of the perspective information in the scene. So it's very important to get these ones right. So what I usually do is that with uh, an, a scene, I first try with the standard ones, with the standard ones, which is, I think, uh, zero and 30. And uh, if this doesn't work, uh, what I do is to try to find some other um, some other keyframes and try a few of them until I get the the least uh, average error in the scene. All right, at least uh, I get the, the lowest one, uh, and that's it. Uh, that's it. <laughs> okay, guys. So uh, I hope you find this useful, and uh, I may do this uh, another time because uh, I get a lot of questions, and uh, a lot of times they are uh, repeated over time over and over again. So I may take a look at that to make some more uh, frequently asked questions videos like this. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you learned something at least from this video. Uh, see you soon and happy blending. Hey guys, and if you liked it, please subscribe for weekly tutorials and more videos like this. Yeah, yeah. here, click right here. Oh, come on, here, <laughs> bye.